let's move on to item number 21. Two numbers have a sum and difference of 4 and negative 18, respectively. What is their product? Is it negative 77, negative 21, 21, or 77? All right. I will reveal the solution now. So remember, it says here respectively. So which means the sum is 4. Their difference is negative 18. So if I represent the two numbers as x and y, then it follows that x plus y equals 4 and that x minus y is equal to negative 18. With the intention of uh, eliminating y, I will be adding both sides. So x plus x will become 2x y plus negative y will become 0. 4 plus negative 18 is negative 40. Dividing both sides by 2 to solve for x, we have x equals negative 7. Now that I have the value of x, I can now substitute it to any of these two equations here. In my case, I opted to substitute in the first one. So I replace this x with negative 7. I have negative 7 plus y equals 4. And adding 7 both sides gives y equals 11. And since the two numbers are negative 7 and 11, then their product is negative 7 times 11. Um, product, by the way, is the answer of a multiplication sentence, which is negative 77 letter A. 22. What is the complete factored form of 8x cubed y squared minus 72xy to the fourth? Is it A, B, C, or D? So in factoring, it's important that you get the LCD, I mean the GCF first, if possible. So you could see that for 8 and 72, the else the GCF is 9, is 8 rather. So I have your 8, I took out 8. For the x cube and x, you have to pick the one with a smaller exponent. That's why I picked x. And for the y's, it should be what? You should be picking y squared. That's why 8xy squared is your GCF. And for that, we're dividing each of these terms by the GCF. So 8x cubed y squared divided by 8xy squared, you have x squared. And negative 72xy to the fourth divided by this is negative 9y squared. But if you could see x squared minus 9y squared here, this is a difference of two squares. And so thus could be factored. So the, um, the, G, the, L, the square root of x squared is x. So we have your x as well. For that of y, 9y squared is negative 3y. And the other is plus 3y. I mean, it's, we have here 3y as well. One of them is minus, And the other should be plus. Hence, 8xy squared times the quantity x minus 3y times the quantity x plus 3y is the correct answer, letter A. 23. In a right triangle with acute angle theta in the Euclidean plane, sine theta equals 5 fourths. What is the value of cosine theta? Is it 12 thirteens, 5 thirteens, 12 fifths, or is it impossible? If you study your trigonom trigonometry, Remember that uh, sine is in fact the, the ratio of the lengths of the opposite and the hypotenuse of your right triangle. And remember that hypotenuse is the longest side of your triangle. So if you divide, so therefore, if you divide opposite with your hypotenuse, then we are actually expecting that the value should be less than one. 
because the hypotenuse is larger than the opposite side. Hence, hypotenuse is always the longest side of the, the triangle and thus sine theta should be less than 1. Having sine theta 5 fourths, which is greater than 1, is impossible and thus cosine theta is also impossible. Hence, letter D is the correct answer. 24. What expression represents the slope of f of x equals 2x cubed minus 7x plus 2? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? We have to remember this, that in calculus, the slope of a certain function is in fact its first derivative. So we can employ the power rule here. We could uh, take the derivative of each term. For 2x cubed, we could employ the power rule. So 2 times 3, so you have 6. And uh, subtract the exponent 3 minus 1, which is we have here 2, so 6x squared. The derivative of negative 7x, it's negative 7. And the derivative of 2, which is a constant, by the way, is 0. Because the derivative of any constant is 0. Hence, B is the correct answer. 25. A triangle has a base of x squared minus x minus 6 and the height of 1 all over x plus 2. What is its area in square units? Is it A, B, C, or D? We have to be reminded that the formula for the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. So by substitution, we have one-half times the quantity x squared minus x minus 6 times the quantity 1 over x plus 2. However, we could notice that x squared minus x minus 6 is still factorable into x minus 3 times x plus 2. And you could see we have here x minus 3 in the numerator and we have your x, I mean x plus 2 in the numerator, the same here. And if you multiply this, I'm sure this will become 1. And note that this is only true for allowable values of x. Hence, what will be left will be 1 half times x minus 3 or simply x minus 3 all over 2 as its area, letter A. 26. What is x in 9 raised to x plus 2 equals 27 raised to x minus 3? Is it 13, 12, 11, or 10? If you are just keen enough, you could actually see that 9 and 27 could be expressed in terms of the same base, which is 3. Because 9 is 3 squared and 27 is 3 cubed, right? So with such, I have here 3 raised to 2, 3 squared, and raised times x plus 2. Because uh, if you are raising a power to another power, you just copy the common base and multiply their exponents. The same principle applies to the right-hand side. That's why you have 3 raised to the quantity 3 cubed raised to x minus 3. Multiplying their exponents and copying the common base, we have 3 raised to the quantity, the product of this, which is 2x plus 4 equals 3 raised to the product of the numerator uh, exponents, which is 3x minus 9. And since we have an equality and uh, two uh, expressions having the same base and they are equal, then it follows that their exponents are also equal. Hence, we could say that 2x plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 9. And doing necessary algebra here, you subtract both sides by 2x. So here on the left right hand side will become x. And adding 9 here on the left hand side will be 4 plus 9 or 13. Hence, letter A is the correct answer. 27. What is the mean of 2x minus 4y, 4x plus 6y, 
and 6x plus y? Is it A, B, C, or D? To get the mean of these three numbers, of course, we have to add them and divide by 3. That is the concept of mean. With such, you, you add them divided by 3. So 2x plus 4x plus 6x, that's 12x. Negative 4y plus 6y plus y is positive 3y all over 3. And you could see in our numerator, the GCF is 3. So I factored out 3. And that's why 12x divided by 3, we have 4x. Plus 3y divided by 3, that's plus y. That's why we have 4x plus y inside the parentheses here. And you could see that 3 now could be divided, which means that our mean is 4x plus y letter C. 28. The time now is 7 p.m. What time will it be 1,000 hours from now? 8, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., or 1 p.m.? What is your choice? Let's see. We know that in a day we have 24 hours. That's why we have to divide 1,000 hours to determine the remainder. So 1,000 divided by 24 using your calculators or using your own division there, you have 41 with a remainder of 16. Hence, we should be counting 16 hours after 7 p.m. So for 16, I'm going to have it uh, 12 hours after 7 p.m. That will be 7 a.m., right? And... Remember, we have 16 hours, but we still have, we have 12 hours. We need to have four more hours. So what is four hours more after 7 a.m.? That would be 11 a.m. So letter C is the correct answer. 29. What is the 11th term of an arithmetic sequence with a sub 1 equals 10? And D equals negative 4. Is it negative 26, negative 30, negative 34, or negative 38? In this particular equation, I hope you could still recall your arithmetic sequence formula, which is A sub N equals A sub 1 plus N minus 1 times D, where A sub, N, A sub N here represents the nth term a sub 1 is the first term, n is the number of terms, and d is the common difference. So from here, you are given the values already. So if your n uh, is 11, or if you're looking for the 11th term, so your n must be 11. So we have replaced all n's with 11. So I have a sub 11 equals the first term, which is 10 plus 11 minus 1 multiplied by negative 4. From here, I just simplify the 11 minus 1 as 10. And you could see it becomes 10 plus um, 10 times negative 4, which is negative 40, which is negative 30 when simplified. Hence, we are sure that the 11 term is negative 30, letter B. 30. Simplify 2x squared y cubed to the fourth times the square of 3x to the fourth y. Did you go for A, B, C, or D? Let's see if you got it right. So if you have this one, 2 raised to fourth is 16 x squared to the fourth, it's x to the eighth. y cubed to the fourth, that's three times four, 12. So we have y to the 12th. For the second one, applying the same principle using your loss of exponents, we have three squared, which is nine. 
x to, x to the fourth squared is x to the eighth. Y squared, I mean y raised to two will be y squared. And this time now, we will be multiplying uh, these two. 16 times nine will give you 144. X, if you are multiplying expressions, remember having the same base, you copy the common base and add their exponents. So x to the eight times x to the eight, that would be x raised to eight plus eight or x raised to 16. Y to the 12th times y squared is y to the 14th power letter D is the correct answer here. I hope you got these items correctly and I hope you're doing fine.